In this video, traders, we're going to look at four essential candlestick patterns for new traders. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so candlestick patterns are super useful for all types of trading, long-term, short-term, swing trading, day trading. You know, they are very, very important. And sometimes we get a little hint of what might happen next from a specific candlestick pattern. So I'm gonna share with you today four essential, what I consider to be essential candlestick patterns to know if you're a new trader, if you're an intermediate trader, advanced trader, you may already know these, but it's already good to brush up, especially if you're a new trader, you know, these are some things that are very worthwhile learning and going looking at your charts and just seeing so you can find them on your charts on the markets that you like to trade. Now, talking of charts, this video is sponsored by Core Spreads Australia. There's a link to those guys in the description below for spread trading. Go and check them out. They've got a good selection of markets. They've got very, very tight spreads, decent charting, so you can go and have a look through for your candlestick patterns after you've watched this video. So go and check, click the link, check them out, open up a demo, have a look around the website and see if they're right for you. Okay, so let's get going. Number one is the hammer. So the hammer is really a short body with a longer tail. And this is a bullish candlestick pattern that we like to see at low turning points. Now, this could be in an uptrend on a pullback or it could be on a downtrend making the proper market low. That's the beauty of them. They're powerful in multiple different venues. So we've got a long tail here and it's at turning points. Now the attributes of this hammer is that really the tail should be twice as long as the body. Now, some people say that it can be red or green Personally, I think it's more powerful if it's green. In other words, the close is at the high. That's what the candlestick denotes, by the way, guys. If it's a green candlestick, the close at the top means that it's closed higher than it's opened. If it's a red candlestick, it means it's closed lower than it's opened, it's colored red. So I like to see the close at high. So I like to see the end pushing up. Now, admittedly, it does depend on what market you're trading. If you're trading, let's say, a stock that has a very def definite uh, closing bell, then that works well better potentially than Forex, which obviously we know is 24 hours and you kind of have a bit more arbitrary closing point. But saying that, if it's closed at highs, after it's pushed to lows, that's quite bullish. Do you think that what's happened here is move lower, but buyers have perceived that as value. They've stepped in, pushed the market back up, and it's now closed right at high. So that's leaving you that big kind of tail to the downside and a very short body. So that's quite interesting. And ultimately what you're looking for is for a day two follow through and day three for it to continue to push on and that to be a reversal pattern. So key for this guys is the long tail that's twice as big as the body. All right, so the second one we're gonna look at is the bearish engulfing um, or the outside bar or outside candle. Now bearish engulfing you get really when the market is gapping. So that's gonna be more for either maybe the uh, weekend stuff on your Forex, otherwise it's gonna be for stuff that's got a closing point like your stocks, etc. So what does it actually mean? So the bearish and is why I've included the just the standard kind of outside, outside candle because the bearish engulfing traditionally means that it's gapped up above the range and it's traded a little bit above. Now it's come down, it's closed outside of the range as well. So this, is completely, or the body of the candle is completely, not just the tail, the body is completely engulfing the prior day's range. You only get that with a gap. Now, just as powerful as this one, where the body might be the same, but actually the highs and the lows are taking over the whole range. So it's got a higher high than yesterday and a lower low than yesterday. And that's really the key. You know, we can get into the semantics and the details about the engulfing, but what we're looking for really is that today's high was higher than the prior day's high, today's low was lower than the low. That means literally it's gone to the highs, looked around and gone, nah, no more buyers, reverse back and preferably, you know, you wanna see it closing at lows. It's gonna be red, definitely gotta be red if it's bearish engulfing, bullish engulfing will be green, but you wanna to be closing as low as possible. And traditionally bearish engulfing would be closing below the prior day's low. But, you know, similarly you can make, listen guys, like all trading, there are times when you can bend things a little bit if it's looking really good and it's like a really big kind of move up and it failed and it's got like a mixture maybe of an engulfing and a, and a shooting star we'll look at in a moment, then you've got to kind of judge what it's telling you. But that's traditionally what we're looking at. Um, now we're looking to, uh, you know, it covers the prior day's action as an outside bar and we're looking for follow through the next day to the short side. If it's a bullish engulfing up to the long side. All right, so number three guys is the shooting star. So very similar as you can see to the hammer, but it's time to the upside. This is a 
a big kind of wick. And again, the body has got to be half the size of the wick, technically speaking. Nice long wick, closes at lows, rolls over. Some people, again, say that it's okay to be green. I don't like it. I like to see that red person. I like to see it close at lows. But again, just a reminder, it does depend on the asset that you're trading, the market you're trading. Um, so shooting star, we have a push up. We have this kind of look, a drive up, drive up, drive up. Looks nice and strong balls are very excited. If you think intraday, how that looks, very good at highs. Starts to reverse intraday, starts to roll back down, starts to kind of oh, not look so good and close at lows. That's an intraday change in sentiment, super good for indicating supply demand and balance shift. And then day two, day three, follow through is what we're looking for. Now, we've talked about these on a daily chart, which is where they're the most powerful. Can you trade them on a shorter time frame? Yes and no. Listen, if you're going down to like a one minute chart, it's probably not gonna have no value because one minute can't contain much action. The more action you've got in it, the better really, because you think about if it's a day and it's a day worth of people trading and making decisions and auction process, then it's much more useful than say 15 minutes or an hour. But listen, if you're going down to time frames on an hourly, you know, maybe two hourly, four hourly, that's not so bad. Anything lower than that, start to degrade. Uh, the usefulness of the of the pattern. All right, so number four, guys, we've got a hanging man. So hanging man is like a hammer, but at the top of the market. So in other words, you see this at the top. Now this is, again, same attributes, long tail, short body, etc. Next candle, well, we'll talk about it in a second, actually. Um, why I don't like this so much is because you've almost the idea theory of this, before we talk about why I'm not so keen on it, but we'll talk about how to get around it as well. What I don't, well, the theory of this is that you've tested lower. Yes, you've closed higher, but it's a short signal or short glimpse, should I say, that maybe there's some sellers there because you've pushed quite low here. And yes, you've closed at highs, but you've, you've kind of had a little glimpse that there are some sellers. Sure, it's not quite as nice as perhaps some of these which are closing at lows and are doing a different type of thing, but it shows you there's some kind of sellers there. And what's key about this, guys, is the next day. So really, with many of these, you might trade and go, okay, well, I'm gonna trade the day, the immediate day after on the short side here, on the long side here, of these candles, but this one you want to see. You might even wait for day three. That's four. You might even wait for day three. You might even wait until this one comes lower and you see that that's red. And you go, okay, well I can work off that one. And use that as a, a pre-trigger if that makes sense. So that's why I don't like it so much because it's not as powerful, but it's still giving you a little glimpse, you know, of what's going on uh, under the bonnet, so to speak. And yes, you know, you can also have these as red as well, which would make it a little bit better in my eyes. I'd like to see the, the close, closing direction of the trade that I want to take. But again, back to depending on what assets you're take, kind of trying to trade. All right, guys, so this video was sponsored by Core Spreads Australia. Go and check them out for your spread trading. There's a link to them in the description below. And this was four essential candlestick patterns for newer traders. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.